Hi, my name is Jonathan Crane. I'm the Tropical Fruit Crop Specialist with the University of Florida IFAS, and I'm located at the Tropical Research and Education Center in Homestead, Florida. And I'm going to talk about laurel wilt. I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual disease and the vectors that transmit the disease, but mostly I'm going to talk about control tactics for the disease. Laurel wilt is caused by a fungal pathogen. It is transmitted by ambrosia beetles and it affects trees in the laurel family or the Lauraceae, both native trees and also avocados. It does not affect trees in the citrus family or the apple family or the banana family, but trees in the laurel family. What are some of the symptoms of trees affected with laurel wilt? The first symptom that is usually seen is where part of the canopy of the tree wilts. And it actually goes into what looks like a tree that hasn't been watered sufficiently, so the leaves wilt. Eventually, and rather rapidly, those leaves will dry out and turn brown, yet they remain on the tree. And that's because this wilting occurs very, very rapidly. Eventually, you'll see other limbs, other parts of the tree uh, affected, begin to wilt, the leaves turn brown, you'll see the tree start to die back, the, the uh, stems, then you'll see the limbs, and eventually uh, the, the entire tree can be dead. So the earliest symptom, as I mentioned before, is uh, wilting, and uh, you should be looking at the canopy, up in the canopy, to search for trees showing those early symptoms. So what are some of the recommendations that we have for controlling laurel wilt and stopping the spread of laurel wilt? First recommendation is to maintain healthy trees. A healthy tree can withstand diseases and insect attack much better than trees that are unhealthy. So first thing is good tree health, proper irrigation, proper nutrition. The other reason you want to keep the trees healthy is because the ambrosia beetles, and there are several species we now know that transmit the pathogen, are attracted to trees that are under stress. And this can be stress from environmental factors such as drought stress, flooding stress, cold stress, but also trees that are not cared for, trees that are unhealthy because of a lack of fertilizer and nutrients, for instance. So anything that causes a tree to be unhealthy can attract ambrosia beetles, and some of those ambrosia beetles may be carrying the laurel wilt pathogen, and thus you've started uh, an infestation, and those trees are affected by laurel wilt. Next uh, recommendation is detecting trees that have laurel wilt. And this is one of the key components, is that the earlier you can detect a tree with symptoms of laurel wilt, the better off it will be in trying to control it and stop the spread of the disease. And the reason for this is that laurel wilt is spread two ways. One way is through the root system of one tree attached to the adjacent tree. So as trees get older, as they become mature, their root systems cross and intermingle. And they actually graft together. So what happens is one tree comes down with the laurel wilt pathogen, it begins to decline, and the trees around it, since they are attached to it by the root system, can now draw the spores of this pathogenic fungi to itself, thus causing the disease in the adjacent trees. And this can happen rather rapidly, anywhere from uh, several weeks, we're not exactly sure, um, to probably several months after a tree is, uh, the initial tree is affected. And uh, I should have mentioned that trees once affected by laurel wilt generally die in two to eight weeks. So it's a very rapid death. Um, and that's part of the reason why you see the leaves just hanging on. So you want to try to detect trees that are just beginning to wilt. This way you have a chance of stopping the disease from moving from one tree to the next tree through the root grafts among these adjacent trees. The other reason you want to catch it as soon as possible is that the ambrosia beetles that transmit the disease, and they transmit it uh, anywhere from turning around, uh, emerging from an, uh, an affected tree, 
and then they'll climb out of the tree, emerge from the tree, and they may bore right back into the same tree, or they may fly to the next tree uh, in the grove, or they may fly several miles. Unfortunately, if they are contaminated with the spores of the pathogenic fungus, then they have just transmitted the disease. So the, um, the ambrosia beetles also, when they bore into the trees, uh, and this is the way this works, is the ambrosia beetles are attracted to a tree, they bore into the tree, they form galleries or tunnels in the tree. As they're forming those galleries or tunnels in the tree, they are inoculating the sides of those tunnels with spores of this fungi that is actually a beneficial fungus for the beetles, the ambrosia beetles. It's actually a food source for them. The fungi then sporulates, it then germinates, grows, causes a, a hypersensitive reaction in the tree, and the tree begins to decline and die. They also reproduce in those tunnels or galleries, they're called. And so if you leave a tree that is declining or beginning to decline or a tree that is dead, the beetles set up uh, the tunnels there and begin to reproduce. After uh, they raise their young, the young emerge from the tree and they go out and they infest other or more trees. So very important to try to detect those trees that are showing signs of the pathogen, the laurel wilt pathogen. Next is if you come upon a tree that is showing symptoms, if it is a grove uh, that has never had laurel wilt, then you may want to take a sample to determine that yes, indeed, this is laurel wilt, and we have uh, information on how to take a proper sample. If, however, though, the grove has a history of having had laurel wilt, and, or has laurel wilt in some other part of the grove, there's really, in general, no need to take a sample, you could, but in general, there's probably no need to, especially since it takes anywhere from seven to, to 10 days from the time you take the sample to get a determination whether it is laurel wilt or not. By that time, the disease may have already spread to adjacent trees. So uh, what we suggest is that when you immediately see a tree that's wilting, even if it's the first branch, that you immediately remove that tree entirely and that means as much of the root system, the trunk, the major limbs, the entire tree, and you chip what you can chip, you burn what you may need to burn because it's too big to chip, or you use equipment that is a heavy duty grinding type machine that can grind both the trunk, the major limbs, uh, and the rest of the tree. And you wanna destroy that tree as quickly as possible. Again, the, part of the reason is, is that the fungus can live inside declining or dead trees for quite a long time. Number two is that it's making new beetles because new, the beetles are attracted to it and infesting it and then they will go ahead and reproduce new beetles which would also be contaminated with the pathogen and then they would go out and spread the disease even further. So sanitation is a key, key component to limiting the spread of the disease. In addition to sanitation, we also recommend what we call a spot treatment with fungicides or a complete grove application of fungicides to the trees beforehand. We do not have any control treatment for the pathogenic fungus that is a cure. So these fungicides have to be, number one, applied before the tree comes down or is, is infected with the disease. Um, and Number two, it has to get inside the tree. So these are systemic fungicides that have to be placed in the tree. And the recommendation is either you treat all your trees with the fungicide, or if that's too expensive, that you then treat what we call a spot treatment, which is to treat those trees, two or three trees, that are healthy on either side of a laurel wilt affected tree. So we call that a spot treatment. The way this is done, there are two methods. One is an infusion method, which is sort of, you can think of as an IV system, where you place the liquid fungicide inside the tree, diluted in water. The other is usually an injection treatment, where you're using a higher, much higher concentration of the fungicide and injecting it into various parts of the tree. 
The idea is that by protecting those trees that are next to a tree affected by laurel wilt, you are going to prevent the disease from moving from the laurel wilt affected tree to the adjacent healthy trees. And so you're walling off the spread of that disease. Again, it has to be done as quickly as possible. You can't delay. It has to be well done. Um, if you compare the difference between infusion, which I mentioned to you before, is a dilute solution of the fungicide. Um, that we recommend, uh, the research has shown that that is a, a, a preferred method because it immediately begins to protect the tree because the fungicide spreads out into the, uh, the tree's wood, the sapwood, very rapidly. And it lasts at the present time with the materials we're using lasts anywhere from 12 to 18 months. If you're uh, doing a injection, the injection is where you're using a higher concentration and you're putting in very point sources, high concentrations of the fungicide in various uh, parts of the tree. It takes quite a bit longer for the uh, fungicide to dissipate and begin to protect the tree. Uh, it tends not to cover the inside of the tree as quickly or as efficaciously as the infusion. Um, and again, you have to come back and treat about every 12 months. Um, so we have found through our research that the infusion method seems to be the preferred method, um, although some people do uh, inject. Uh, so that would be, that's the injection, the infusion with the, the, the fungicides. Um, the other recommendation is controlling the ambrosia beetles. So this is done, number one, by the sanitation method. So by destroying the tree and the wood, you are disrupting the reproduction of the ambrosia beetles in that tree, in that wood. You are stopping the reproduction. And that's been quite successful. However, if you have trees that are affected by laurel wilt, we do know that there are ambrosia beetles in the grove, obviously. So we do recommend that a insecticide spray whether it's a chemical-based insecticide, and there are about seven different insecticides that are legal to use in avocados to try to control ambrosia beetles. Five of them are chemical-based, and two of them are uh, organic or biocontrol. Actually, one of them is uh, organically certified. And the idea with that is to apply this insecticide in a directed spray, directed towards the major limbs and the trunk from about 10 feet down. This is not a spray that's to go all over the foliage and all over the, the tree. It's directed from about 10 feet down on the major limbs and the trunks. And you want to do that probably, depending on the uh, product, anywhere at, from a 10 to 14 day, maybe even longer interval. Uh, because we know there are beetles around and you want to do it on basically to the trees that are within an acre distance from the laurel wilt affected tree. So we're not asking people to spray the insecticides uh, in the entire uh, grove, just in that area, that one acre area around the affected area. Lastly, again, uh, people, it sort of comes full circle. Uh, if you do have laurel wilt and you detect it in your grove, you need to act very, very quickly. And again, you should frequently scout the grove. And that means on the ground, either walking or driving through the grove, looking for trees. And so that cycle just repeats itself, uh, that you need to be frequently looking. When you find a tree that's symptomatic, especially in a grove that has already had laurel wilt, you need to implement the tactics I just mentioned the sanitation, the fungicide treatments, and the insecticide treatments. All this information that I've just discussed is available online, both in video format and also in printed material.